Free. 
church let's lift our hands to heaven this morning let's thank him personally for what he's done in your life what he's brought you through just on a personal level why don't you lift your hands to Jesus close your eyes and declare his worthiness show him some gratitude for the faithfulness that he has shown in your life
I want us to sing Worthy is Your Name one more time. But church, I want us to just switch our posture of worship to being all about Him. You know, sometimes we reserve our praise and we hold back our worship because we're caught in stress and anxiety or we're thinking about what we're still waiting on, the promises of God we're still holding on to. God is faithful. He's going to answer your promises. He's going to bring relief to your life through unanswered prayers. But something that worship does, when we make it about Him, when we decide to show Him the worthiness and the praise that He deserves, Something changes in the atmosphere. Something changes in our hearts. So can you lift your hands to heaven this morning? Let's declare his worthiness this morning. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. a shout of praise this morning. Come on, 11 a.m. Let's stir up a spirit of praise this morning. Hallelujah! We worship you, Jesus! Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the presence of God. Your presence is in this place. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We honor you in this place by yielding in a spirit of surrender. God, from the front to the very back of this room. God, from every side. God, in every floor, the kids, the youth. God, every area in this building. I thank you that the glory of God is hovering over victory. In Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for the presence of our living God. The Savior, the creator of the universe is here in this place. As we seek you, God, we choose to believe that you hear every prayer. You hear every cry, every request, God. And I thank you, Jesus, that you desire to answer every need. Church, God is a God of relief. You know one way he relieves his people, one way he brings relief to you, to me, is through answered prayers. Some of us doubt his ability or his desire, his willingness to answer prayers in our life. Some of you are praying for healing. You're praying for a spouse. You're praying for healing in your heart and relationships. You're praying for provision from heaven. And I want to encourage you today that God desires to bring relief to your situation. He not only desires, but he is capable. Some of, you, some of us doubt his capability. I don't want to remind you that he is more than able. Some of us desire his willing, er, some of us doubt his willingness and his desire. But my God says he perfects everything that concerns us. My God says that he loves us. That why would he send his best? his son to die for each and every one of us, yet withhold his best from his children. 
God desires. Some of, there's somebody in this room or watching online that has felt like you, it's like the, the world caving in. And it's like you're, 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 in a, you're in a tunnel or you're in one of those spaces where it just kind of feels like the ceiling is getting lower and the light is growing dim. And you're saying, God, I need you. I just need to breathe. I feel like the life, that life has just sucked the air out of me. If you're in that situation now, or maybe you've been in it before, I know I have, where it feels like the situations of life, whether it be loss, whether it be grief or disappointment, or just weariness from believing God to come through and answer prayers. And we look for relief, we look for answers. And I wanna encourage you today that God wants to answer your prayers. He wants to meet you where you're at. And while you're waiting on answered prayers, can I tell you that His presence is enough. His presence is strong enough to sustain you, church. We cannot look as answered, yes, answered prayers is where God desires to relieve us. But answered prayers, my joy and my peace and my contentment cannot be tied to answered prayers. His presence is enough to sustain you. And every single one of you in this room can access the presence of God. Some of you are in this room. It's like you're standing at the, the sand. If you can go with me, if we all wanna be at the beach a little bit. Go to the beach in your mind. You're standing at the sand and you see the ocean and the waves. And sometimes life feels like the waves. You're standing there and it feels like the waves have knocked you down. And it feels like a tsunami. I can't remember the name of the movie, but there's this, this movie where it's a true story about the tsunami that hit over in, in Asia and Thailand. And it was, and it just swallowed everything on the, on the, on the shore. And what does it do when it swallows everything on the shore? It takes it back out to sea. And I have felt like that before, where life has been like a wave and it's just swallowed me. And it's, and it's felt like sometimes it took my faith with it. It took my joy, it took my peace. And I believe that in the presence of God today, that God is, He is restoring faith. I don't know where, you know, when we give our life to Jesus, it doesn't, we're not exempt from trials and heartache and pain. But when we give our life to Jesus, we have the ability to build our life on the rock. We have our ability to build our life on a solid foundation. And some of us experience cracks in our foundation because we go through pains and disappointments. And we go through situations that make us question our faith. God is not your problem. The foundation in the rock is not your problem. Jesus is the rock. He is the foundation. But let me ask you, church, is He your rock? In your finances, is He your rock? In your relationships, is He your rock? In your prayer closet, in the times where you're questioning God, when are you going to show up? Have you made Him your foundation? I believe that in the presence of God, that He's reminding each and every one of us of His promises and that it's gonna fill the cracks when the earth shifts. I grew up in a house, one of our houses was on a hill and it was tall and the people said, hey, you need pillars in your house. Like the foundation's been moving and we didn't do that. And what happens? There began to grow cracks along the side of the home. Some of us in this room, we have cracks in our faith because of things that have happened in life. 
We're not exempt from trials, and it's absolutely normal to experience moments in our life where it feels like, is my faith broken? Well, I wanna encourage you, you might have cracks in your faith because you haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to heal those areas, but there's nothing wrong with the foundation of Jesus. There's not, he is still the rock, and as you call on the name of the Lord, as you seek Him, He answers you. As you seek Him, He hears you, and He desires to answer you. Church, He is the rock, but is He your rock in every single area? Can we lift our hands to heaven? Can you repeat this prayer after me today? Say, God, I choose to build my life on the rock. I put my faith in You. Restore my faith in your goodness, in your character, in Jesus' name. I respond to your presence with a spirit of surrender. Paul's going to continue to lead us in a time of worship. But church, I believe this weekend is Miracle Offering Weekend. And it's no coincidence. I know some of you are up against some obstacles and some mountains. And I believe that the Spirit of God is gonna speak something to our heart, that as we hear and obey, as we respond to the Spirit of God on the inside of us, there's gonna be healing where there's been cracks, where there's been brokenness, and there's been temptations to doubt. Today, your faith, because of your obedience in any area, is gonna restore and is gonna heal the gaps to where you can then declare and re-declare that He is your rock and your foundation. Lord, we worship you, God. And here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Here I am to say, You're my God. You're all together lovely. All together all together wonderful to Here I am to worship. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. Still my God. You're all together. Still holy. All together worship.
join with the angels. We join with the wise men. We join with those shepherds thousands of years ago. know he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy you know we come to the end of the year and we look back on January February March April May June July August September October November and now here we are in December and we can look back and say God you brought me through another year you've been faithful in the past you've been faithful in the present I know you're gonna be faithful in my future how many of y'all have a reason to give glory to God this year Come on, you're still breathing. You got breath in your lungs. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath give thanks to the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Worthy you were. Worthy. do something a little different this weekend instead of me preaching a sermon it's going to feel more like a worship flow testimony service and we're going to take time to give thanks for what God's done this year but we're going to take communion together and so I want you to take a seat for a minute and then we'll get back up and worship some more but as we get ready to take communion there's some communion elements that um, you should have received when you walked in if you didn't get these our ushers will bring them to you our dream team members just raise your hand they'll get it to you wherever you're sitting Keep your hand up until they come and find you. But as we get ready to take communion, I want to invite up Ty and Debbie Barker. They lead our discipleship class ministry, our team pastors, pastors Ty and Debbie. And, you know, God's done so much this year through our outreach, through our evangelism, our missions trips, uh, and our services in the Dream Center, at the school, the camp, the college. But one area that we often don't shine a spotlight on is our discipleship classes. And this last week, I went into our third floor chapel in the school building, which is a miracle room, by the way, that God supernaturally helped us pay off debt-free as a ministry. But when I went in there, there was hundreds and hundreds of people who were graduating for the first time. Many of them have never graduated different things. And they came up to me, they said, it's my first time to graduate some. Our discipleship class ministry graduated hundreds of graduates from men and women. Tell them, tell them what God's done. 
Well, Ty and I are just so blessed to be a part of this and so grateful for the vision that pastors have had a few years back when some of the curriculum had changed from Victory by Virtue, Straight Talk, to now Discipleship. And what I want you to hear and, and know is that this isn't just for someone walking through something that needs a little extra help. No matter where you have been, whether you're a seasoned Christian or you're a baby Christian, the discipleship class will just stir into a greater flame the fire of God that's already on the inside of you. It will help you take the tools, the Word of God, and walk forward. We've seen people that have, one came in, never knew Christ, and now they have Him as their Savior and Lord. Two, we've seen other people that have been healed, delivered, set free, and just be able to walk in and then receive healing, not just in their soul, but physical healing. So I just want to say, did you graduate this last Thursday night? I would love all of those graduates and all of our leaders who are a part of this session to please stand up because we want to celebrate you. Awesome. Well, we are, we are so thankful, and we congratulate all our graduates. And, you know, it's one thing that, that I look back, and I'm so grateful, first of all, that we have a pastor and a church that believes in investing in its people to, to grow them in Christ and to, to deepen their walk with Christ. So I'm forever thankful that, that you have that heart, and we get to be a small part of that. Uh, this graduation, there were so many things that marked me, and uh, one of the guys said this to me, and, and I'm telling you, it was, it was exactly what I want to hear. He said, you know, I've been in church all my life. He said, but uh, what this class really did was strengthen my foundation with him. He said, I'd always come, and, and we talk about this, and especially in the men's class, he said, I always come to church kind of with a mask on. And we talk about there's a lot of people that come to church with a mask on. They, they got a good smile and they praise God, hallelujah. But sometimes there's hurt back there. There's, there's hopelessness. There's uh, even not even a relationship with God, but they put on a mask like there is. And he says, I was able for the first time to take off the mask and really deepen and, and grow my relationship with Jesus and other men. And I'm telling you, that's exactly why we do what we do. And I'm so thankful for that. Pastor, uh, back about seven, eight years ago, uh, he and I met on this and he said, you know, I've got great vision for this. And, and again, he wants to invest in it. And he said this, and he said, I wanna make discipleship free for anyone that wants to come. And I'm a man of faith, but I was like, oh, pastor, come on. <laughs> Because it's like $55 of true cost that we have for each student that comes through. And so in my mind, I'm doing calculations on that. But he said, no, I believe God and I want it to be free. And I said, okay, I agree. And ever since then, through your giving and through the, the uh, offerings that we take up at Discipleship, every semester we've had more than enough to pay for everyone that's coming and more that are going to come. And so I want to just thank you. Yeah, come on, give yourselves a hand there. I want to thank you for your thankfulness or your faithfulness in giving because a lot of times when we give, we, we think about just the Dream Center or things, and I'm so glad we do that and we need to do that. But I'm so thankful again that our church plants seed into every one of us in here. And so we just want to thank you for your gifts that's allowed us to do this so anyone that wants to come can come for free. Over the last eight years, we've probably graduated thousands of men 3,000, 3,000 men and women who've gone through our discipleship track just in the last eight years. It's a 12-week course that are coming out and they're making disciples. They're leading groups. They're leading others to Christ, changing families. Come on, let's give God thanks one more time. If you got a Bible, would you go to 1 Corinthians 11? And if you don't, we'll put it on the screen, 1 Corinthians 11. And as we get ready to take communion, Paul the Apostle wrote to the Corinthian church. He said, when you take communion, you have to take it seriously. When you remember what Jesus did for you, his body broken for you, his blood poured out for us on the cross. We just sang about this during worship. Paul said, there is a connection to our health. There's a connection to our spiritual health, but our physical health, as well as um, really our relationships in life that are connected to communion. And I was praying about this weekend, and I felt like the Lord said, take communion before you uh, invite people to give into what God's doing in this ministry. 
And you might be here today and it's your first time to victory. You don't have to give anything into this church. We're just grateful you're here. But if this is your home and you go, you know, I, I feel called here. I feel connected here. This house has ministered to my family or to me. Before we give, I really felt like the Lord said to lead us all into a time of repentance and receiving forgiveness, releasing forgiveness, and remembering what Jesus did on the cross through communion. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. He says, when you eat this bread and you drink this cup of juice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he returns, that Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the grave. But then Paul says this, whoever does this in an unworthy manner is sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. So when we take communion and we remember what he's done, but we don't examine our hearts and repent of sin, we sin against God. And Paul says this, everyone ought to examine themselves. What does that word examine? It means to look on the inside. It means to do a personal investigation of your soul. We're coming to the end of the year, and I'm sure you've had some good and bad moments in 2023. We all have. Some maybe in the room you've said, you know, not just good and bad. I've had some ugly moments in this year. And the truth is, when you get to the end of the year, it is a time to reflect and evaluate. It's a time to give thanks to God that he brought you through another year. But it's also a time to lay some burdens down, some hurts down, forgive some people you need to forgive. Maybe forgive yourself. Maybe, like Ashley said, some of us have walked through disappointment. Maybe you've held unforgiveness towards God. Maybe you've blamed God for things in your life that didn't turn out the way you wanted them to this year. Um, Prayers that you haven't seen gotten answered yet. But I, I wanna encourage you with this. God wants to heal you. God wants to restore you. God wants to help you. The word of God doesn't say he's against us. It says he's for us. And the way that we partner with God in his word and his promises is by coming to him, like Paul said, examining our hearts in the Bible, saying, Lord, if there's things that I've I've allowed in my heart, hurts, wounds, sin, shame, anger towards another brother or sister, towards family or friends, Lord, I want you to remove any blockage that would stop you from healing my heart, working through my life, bringing your blessing into my family and my finances, into the future that you have for me. 2024 is gonna be an amazing year, I believe it. But only if we finish this year with the spirit of surrender and say, Lord, do in me what you wanna do, work in me. God, pull out anything in me that's, that's been growing in that garden. If there's any weeds that are choking out the life of what you're trying to produce, the fruit, even this past week, I, I, my, my patience level was getting small. And I preached last week on shalom. And I felt like the Lord was telling me my sermon every single day. Paul, choose peace, choose peace. Um, it's a stressful season. And we can lose our tempers or we can get, you know, impatient with people. And it's in those moments that I think the Holy Spirit wants us to stay tender and not become cold and calloused and say, well, I'm saved and I don't need to repent of any sin. And God's just, you know, got to deal with my bad attitude. I want, I want the Lord to keep working in me. And to do that, I have to keep examining my heart and say, God, I repent for any reaction this week that was fleshly. Lord, I want your gentleness to be real on the inside of me. I want your compassion, your kindness, your self-control. I want the fruit of the Spirit to grow in my life. So I want us, before we take communion, I want us just to bow our heads and close our eyes. If you're here today, and there's sins you need to repent of. John said in 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. The forgiveness of God is here. The mercy of God is here. You're not alone. I'm right there with you. If you need forgiveness today, if you need to forgive some people who've hurt you and you've been holding on to it, maybe it's yourself. Maybe you've been really hard on yourself. Maybe it's God and you need to release that that bitterness you've been holding on to. Before we take communion, Before we take communion, Paul says, examine yourselves. He says, there's healing on the other side of forgiveness. And we're gonna pray for healing. We're gonna pray for those that are sick this morning. We're gonna pray for those that are needing a miracle. But the first things first is right here. It's just genuine, sincere. Like Pastor Ty said, take the mask off and say, God, I need your mercy. And I need to give your mercy to people that have hurt me or my family. If that's you, just raise your hand all over this room. Hands going up from the front to the back. Yes, sir. I'm not going to ask you to leave your seat. Just right where you're at. You can lift it very small. You don't even have to raise it high. But you're saying, yeah, I need forgiveness. I need to release some forgiveness in Jesus' name. 
Lord, I thank you right now for every honest man, every honest woman, every person, every boy and girl, mom, dad, grandparent, great-grandparent. God, I thank you that you are faithful. You are faithful and you're merciful. Just pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You rose from the grave to give me eternal life. I repent of my sins and I receive your forgiveness. Holy Spirit, work in me. I choose to forgive those who have hurt me. Lord, I need your mercy. So I release your mercy to those around me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take the bread. Jesus broke the bread with his disciples. And he lifted it up and he said, this bread represents my body that is broken for you. When you take it and eat it, remember what Jesus did for you 2,000 years ago. Let's eat the bread and remember Jesus giving his life for us. He then took the cup with his disciples. He says, this is the new covenant that I'm making with you, a covenant that is made by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed 2,000 years ago on that hill, Calvary, on the cross. And he says, when you drink this, remember that I have paid the price for your sins. Today, let's drink this juice and remember what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we stand to our feet all over this place? We're going to sing a worship song together. The ushers are going to pass a, a, a bag down the row. We can place this in there. And as we sing this, if you're here today and you need healing, maybe you need a miracle, I want to just encourage you to lift your hands and just receive by faith what the blood of Jesus purchased for you and for me 2,000 years ago. Let's go ahead, Lamar. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony you know as we're finishing this year and we've got three weeks left this year I just feel like the Lord wants us to testify and then to plead the blood of Jesus to testify of God's faithfulness and then to stand on the blood of Jesus for healing for miracles if you're here today and you need healing in your body would you raise your hand? Maybe you have a family member at home that's sick right now. We want to pray for you. You have a family member in the hospital. Believers, if we can, lay our hands on those that are believing for a miracle. Maybe put your hand on their shoulder. Ask them, what are you praying for? What do you need a miracle in? And let's stand together today. Let's pray for healing for those that are sick, healing for those that are standing for a family member that's sick in the hospital. Let's just speak the blood of Jesus. We're going to worship as we pray. If you have your hand raised, those that see a hand raised, if you're a believer, would you just reach out and ask them, what are you praying for? What do you need healing for today? And let's just turn in a group of two or three. Let's begin to pray. The blood of Jesus.
We speak to cancer to go in Jesus' name. Headaches to go in Jesus' name. Tumors to dissolve in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those that have had pain in their back to be healed. Pain in their neck to be healed, God. Lord, I pray for healing for marriages. Restoration, God, for marriages. Restoration for families, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, fathers and daughters, mothers and daughters. In Jesus' name. Put your hand on that place. If it's in your head, it's on your heart, maybe it's your skin, maybe it's your foot, maybe it's your back, your neck. If you need healing, just place your hand on that part. Lord, I pray that you see every area where there's hurt, where there's pain, physical pain or emotional pain. And God, I thank you that you are the great physician. Lord, I pray for healing today. I pray, God, even in this service, that people would leave different than the way they came in, those that are watching online. God, I thank you that what you did back then, you can do it again. You can do it again. Someone who's been in a car accident that's had severe pain, I thank you that today, God, you're bringing healing to that pain. Someone who's at home right now watching online, I thank you, God, that you're the healer right there as they're watching. In Jesus' name, we pray. Just in the last service, as we were leaving, there was a woman who came up to me and she said, this year I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And she said, I I stayed in faith. I just said, Lord, I thank you that you're healing me. You're healing me. She said, five months I was in this test, this battle, but I just kept on standing and praying. She said, just a month or two ago, I found out I'm cancer free. It's totally gone. God totally healed me of breast cancer. Come on. He still heals. He still restores. He still redeems. He still transforms. Well, listen, we are a family. We are not a crowd. And so I'm going to ask you to do something. Maybe you have here for the first time. I'm going to ask you to lift your neighbor's hand on your left and right. A divided world needs a united church. A world that speaks defeat needs a church that speaks victory. On the count of three, we're going to declare your best days are right in front of you. The words are on the screen. Here we go. One, two, three. I'm here on purpose because I have a purpose. My heart is open. All right, give someone a high five. You may be seated. Well, church, we've got a lot to celebrate, and I want you to uh, take out a card you received when you came in. It's, it's a card that says, you made a difference. And on the back side of it says Miracle Offering Weekend. There's a line for us to fill out what we're believing God for. If you did not get this card, just raise your hand. Our ushers will bring it to you. And I want to just share what God has done this year. This year as a church, we have helped lead 6,404 people to Christ in our services. That's like 500 people a month that have given their hearts to Jesus because of what your giving has done through Victory. We've, we've uh, brought 892 people through our growth track. That's a three-week growth track process who uh, made the decision to make Victory their home church. That's almost 1,000 people this year that were added to the church. 805 people went public with their water baptism saying, I belong to Jesus. Come on, 800 plus people. At the Tulsa Dream Center, which is what we give towards monthly, meals were served. Come on, that's literally almost 3 million meals this year. We served 77,321 people. 
We're individually served, documented, coming through the Dream Center at our West Dream Center, our North Dream Center, that were served because of your generosity. 8,962 children and teenagers were served in our after-school youth sports programs and education after-school learning and tutoring programs. And I'm telling you this, those kids that are coming through that, we've now been doing this for 20 years. Those kids and teenagers are going on. They're getting college scholarships. They're changing neighborhoods in North Tulsa, West Tulsa. Come on, it's incredible what's happening through that after school program. 2,820 people at the Dream Center gave their hearts to Jesus. That's salvations. This year, local and global outreach, we sent out 379 missionaries from our church. Right now, we have a team of 12 people in Bulgaria. We're doing Christmas in Bulgaria, ministering to people. And I got word this morning that 150 people have given their hearts to Jesus in the last 48 hours in Bulgaria through our missionaries sent out from Tulsa, Oklahoma. This year we had missionaries go to Brazil, Israel, Belize, uh, Poland, Bulgaria, uh, the nations continue, Nicaragua, uh, all over Mexico, different parts of, of the world. And then we had 157 people get healed, documented healings, physical healings um, on those mission trips. At, at Camp Victory, we had 2,500 boys and girls and teenagers go to camp this summer and through our camps that happened over nine weeks out at Camp Victory, we were able to lead hundreds of boys and girls to Christ, discipling them, plugging them into church. We were able to do a camp just for special needs children, uh, urban camps that we were able to do with kids sponsored to go to camp. Also out at Camp Victory, we built a brand new bunk house, a new zip line out there. We're working on a new marriage uh, retreat center out there. At Victory Christian School, we had almost 1,200 kids enrolled this year, a record enrollment at Victor Christian School. A lot of families who came, we had one family who came that was a Muslim family. They enrolled their kids and their kids have given their hearts to Jesus. We've had families come to Victor Christian School and they've come with no uh, relationship with God. They just said, I gotta get out of the current school system that I'm in. I gotta get my kids here. And as they've been here, their family has found Jesus. Different families who said, my kids led me to Christ because of what was, they were being taught in Bible classes and in chapels at this school. Uh, in our Bible college, 144 students representing 20 different nations. And these are just some of the things God has done. This year, we've um, made progress to reach out to Utica Park Clinic. We've asked them several years, would they ever sell the building? They said, no, 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 multiple times. Felt like the Lord said, keep asking, keep knocking like the persistent widow. Well, this year they came to us. They said, we're ready to sell it, but only to victory. Will you make an offer? So we're in the middle of a contract, believing God to get Utica Park Clinic right here next to the church building. We've wanted that to expand what we're doing in our Bible college, in our school, our elementary, our middle school over there. There's so much need for us to keep growing and reaching more people there. A part of that would be expanding what we do for families through Victory Park. And I just wanna bring up for a minute my family because during worship, I was looking at our family and I was looking at my mom and grand grand, y'all come up here, my wife, Ashley. I've got Benaya in the room, not all the kids. But when I was looking at each family member, I was thinking, you know, I feel like it's such a blessing to be a part of a church that's multi-generational. That on one row, on one row, is one generation, Psalm 144, verse four. What Psalm 145, verse four says, one generation commends the works of God to another generation. And I was looking at this guy, Benny, how old are you? Eight. Eight years old. And he's talking about what God's done in his life to his mom and dad. We're talking to my mom. He's got his great grandmother who turns 100 years old in just two months. One generation to the next generation to the next generation to the next generation. Just a month ago, I was in Ghana, Africa with a mission trip from our church. And while I was there, the pastor said to me, he said, you know, one thing I really respect about Victory is how multi-generational your church is. He said, I was there in August, Pastor Gideon. He said, I came and I looked and he, he said, I saw grandmothers, grandfathers. I saw single college students, young professionals. And then I saw children and teenagers. And he said, in our church, 
um, there's been such a separation in Ghana with a lot of the elderly people going to one church and then the young single, young professionals going to another church. And he said, when I was there, I started crying because I felt like the Lord said, it's time to bridge the generations together in Ghana. And he said, Paul, you don't realize how big of a, a lighthouse victory is to churches all over the world searching for what does a multi-generational and diverse church look like? And it's happening in Tulsa, Oklahoma through your church. Come on, Victory. This is, Grand Grand, you want to say anything? Well, I never thought I'd live this long, but I'm so grateful. And I'm so grateful for all of you people that have stayed with us and still with us and all that you do for Victory. Thank you. Come on, Mom. Yeah, thank you so much for all of you that have been with us over the years and your faithfulness. And uh, also, I, I was thinking about, you know, when you do this, as far as generations, having all the different, different generations, it means we all have to make some changes at times and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. And uh, to me, the, the word surrender is so important that we stay in a surrendered place with God. Uh, we still stand for things that we believe in, but we, we understand we have to flow with the Holy Spirit and what He's doing right now. I'm excited about the awakening that has begun all over the world and that we are all a part of that. You know, one day we'll be in heaven and we'll look back and we'll think, wow, I, I was a part of that last move of God. That's where we are. And we honor my mom. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for your obedience, you and dad walking this out together, starting Victory Church in 1981, the school, the camp, the Dream Center. We honor you, Mom. You are an incredible leader. You're a general of the faith, a mighty woman of God, a Deborah in our generation. Come on, how many are thankful for Pastor Sharon Darty? We stand on the shoulders of giants. And we have a giant alive today. She's not a giant. I mean, you're a skinny, young giant, mighty, beautiful giant woman of God. I don't know how to say that, but you know what I mean. We honor you, Mom. We honor you. We love you. Ashley, you want to say anything? Benny? Okay, all right. Give them a big hand. Y'all could be seated. Well, as we get ready to give, what we're going to do is something a little different. We're going to bring our offering down to the altar. And what I'm going to ask you to do is fill out on this card what you're believing God for. Maybe you're here today and you say, man, I'm praying for my family to be reconciled. I'm praying for a job. I'm praying for more finances so that way I can bless more people. I'm praying for a better car. Maybe you're praying for a house. Maybe you're praying for college uh, scholarship or tuition for school. Maybe you're praying to get married. Maybe you're praying to have children. You're, uh, you've been trying and you just say, man, if we could just pray for a miracle that God, I want you to write it down. There's something about writing the vision down. Habakkuk, the prophet says, write the vision down, make it plain. Write down what it is you're standing for. And as we're coming to the end of the year, I dare you to just trust God. Malachi 3 says, trust God. Trust God, bring your tithe and offering into the storehouse and watch what God will do through your offering. I want to invite up my friend Salman and Mona Riaz and their whole family, wherever they're seated. Uh, where's Salman's family? There they are right there. Bring the whole family up. Bring your brothers and sisters and, and cousins, whoever you got. Bring them all up here. Salman has a powerful testimony that I wanted him to share before we give. Salman and I met in 2006. We both worked for a uh, real estate guy who was uh, kind of pulling us in to be a part of what he was doing, flipping houses and stuff. We were at ORU. But uh, Salma, tell him just a little bit of your family story. Absolutely. First of all, I want to continue with the vision. Thank God for grandmas and moms who are givers. Um, Pastor, my story, I would like to share kind of about my grandma a little bit. My grandma in a country far, far away called Pakistan, um, and I'll share a little bit about giving is not when it's convenient. Most, on this miracle offering weekend, Pastor, we must stretch our faith to understand that on the other side of sacrificial giving is where the miracles happen. And so my grandma, in times when they didn't have money to give, she would take the flour that they had in the house to cook bread out of. She'll take a little bit out of it. Every tenth hand that she'll make a dough out of or something, she'll put it in a separate container. 
and bring it to church on Sunday. So you can't, you don't have to give a certain way. Whatever you have, you bring it to the Lord. And my grandma and grandpa became revivalist in that town. So revival sometimes on the other side of, of our sacrificial giving. So thank you for good giants that we stand on shoulders of pastor. And then my mom and dad, they continued that trend. And before we built our house, they gave to the church. We didn't have an air conditioner. We, did, we lived on, in 115 degree temperature, but they said, no, the church needs to be comfortable first. When you build his house, your house is taken care of, church. So yeah, amen to that. So pastor, we end up- When they, when they bought that AC unit for the church, that same year, you said something happened for your house's finances. Well, yeah, a missionary family was visiting, and they saw that how we were giving to the church, our house ended up getting paid for, fully paid for through a missionary organization. And so this is how it goes, that we give. We're part of being a giving church. I'm, I want to uh, thank Pastor Billy Joe. We entered Maybe Center. This church wasn't built yet. And my sister, Annie and Honey, we showed up to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and $17 in our pocket. And we showed up in the church, and we were mentioning our brother Emmanuel. He brought us down the aisle in um, uh, Maybe Center. And Pastor Billy Joe stops the service, and he said, Emmanuel, who are these kids? Bring them on the stage. And I'll tell you what that generosity, that spirit of welcoming people. Pastor talks about a diverse church. Diverse church doesn't come happen by accident. It was pastor stopping the service saying, welcome these kids from Pakistan. And when we sat down, we felt part of that church, Pastor. And this is, I know, this is one of the most diverse churches. And people ask me all the time, what is the secret sauce of Pastor Paul or this church? Well, an open church that welcomes people. So we got, we felt part of it and 17 years now in this church through multi-city model, even in our family and in our business, this is home. And so I give credit to that day, March 21st, 2006, felt like home. So that day we sat down and Pastor Bruce goes up and gives a uh, call. Much like today, we're all given a call that we need to go above and beyond to build this house. And at that time, this was the project. And we sit down and my sisters and I, all we had was 17 some dollars in our pocket. We took, we looked at each other without flinching, without thinking twice, all we had ended up in that bucket. And praise be to God that that opened so many doors. A few seconds later, some family behind us tapped on our shoulder and gave us 10 times over. And so when we stretch our faith and give what we have, immediately miracles follow. And pastor, that led to me having a paid for Oral Roberts University uh, tuition. Amen, amen. Come on. So, that, so you ended up graduating ORU debt free. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, my sisters graduated Victory Bible College. I graduated Oral Roberts University, all debt-free. Miracles happen. On this miracle weekend, church giving, sometimes sacrificial giving, leads to miracles. We all want a story to tell. We all want a miracle to share. But sometimes it has to walk it out. And then I got married. I've got two kids here. We've got Israel here and uh, my wife Mona and our little one Ziva. And um, I'll tell you what, marrying the right person is so important because you're giving, your decisions that you're going to make for the Lord are all dependent on what kind of, so all those O. Roberts University students, Victor Bell Bible College students, your tuitions, your giving, all that is so wait for that right person as well. So I want to, um, I want to say, Mona, do you want to say something? If you give to God, you will not have lack. Amen, amen. Israel, do you want to say something? Church, give more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what something really fascinating happened. I married Mona, and we are come from a family of givers. Of course, uh, I love to give our tithes and offering general stuff, Pastor. But Mona's, at the height of COVID, was challenging me to go above and beyond. And the call, much like today, she was telling me, Salman, we cannot just stop at just traditional giving, a tithe and offering. She was asking me to build. This is the height of COVID. Times are tough. 
but she's asking me to build a fund for travelers, fund for widows and orphans. And I kind of got into this uh, back and forth with her. I was like, baby, let's just take it out of tithe. We're giving tithe anyway, our offering. She's like, nope. She challenged me quite a bit and sometimes some friction moments, but then we ended up, Pastor, back there on one, one of the services and asked Pastor Paul, because sometimes when we're having challenges in giving, we think that we just need to look here out of what we have. We need to pray. So I didn't go and pa ask Pastor Paul to give, help us uh, get more money. We asked you, sir, to pray that our tithe will increase, our giving will increase. And that was a defining moment. And in that moment, church, we ended up uh, being encouraged, and that was a defining moment. We started a fund for uh, widows and orphans and uh, travelers, and also first, um, first fruits giving. And I'll tell you, church, the praise report, our business went from just a small little business to sales in multi-millions. And that is on the other side of that obedience. So thank God for Mona for pushing me. And thank you, Pastor, for praying for me. And miracles are happening every day. I just want to encourage you guys, as you think about giving, don't just think about what's right in front of you. Think about, like my sisters and I gave it all. And there was tuition on the other side fully paid for. And today we have no lack in our lives, like Mona mentioned, everything paid for. And that is due to a family that's giving. Jesus, come on, give praise to God. We're going we're gonna to do our offering, but I want to remind you, Isaiah 58 says, if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry, you know, something we do every single month is we take care of widows and orphans. We, we partner with rescue traffic uh, homes that are pulling kids out of trafficking situations all over the world. You actually married her. She was a refugee. Tell them real quick, she was a refugee and what, what God did. Amen. Um, there's so many stories. Praise God. Um, when Mona was challenging us about giving above and beyond, uh, that same year when it's the height of COVID, the church was having difficulty. The same church that was had given refugee to Sonia, Mona's sister back there, and Mona now was under trouble because the government was cracking down on refugees and uh, they had no place to hide. And so God put on our heart that the same church that gave refuge, we were able to give above and beyond and built that church. Today in Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand, there is a testament. There's a church that says on it that refugees that were given a refuge there now is built by those same refugees. Come on, come on. This is what Isaiah says. He says, when you give to the hungry, when you help those that are poor, the Lord will make you the repairer of ancient ruins. The Lord will give you light. The Lord will cause your night to become like noonday. He'll make you like a well-watered garden. Your spring of waters will never fail. The Lord's glory will shine on your house. There's a promise when we trust God, when we partner with God. The Lord says you'll become the restorer of streets with dwellings. This is what God has done in your family. He's pulled you. He's made you guys uh, really restores of Tulsa and Thailand, bringing healing and hope, trusting in God. It's a miracle looking at Salmon and what God has done in them and through them. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have Salmon pray over our offering. We're gonna bring it down to the altar. The band's gonna lead us in a worship song. And if you'd like to be a part of giving today, also, we're gonna help meet the needs that after this moment, after service, if you're here today and you say, Paul, I can't afford to get my kids Christmas presents, we're gonna help you. We're not just gonna help people in other nations. We're gonna help people right here in our own church. If you have needs in this Christmas season, we're gonna help you. Maybe you're here today and you go, Paul, there's some major things our family's walking through. We hit hard times. You let us know. After service, our team pastors are gonna stand down here. We have a benevolence fund that other church members have sown towards and said, when there's a member that's fallen on hard times, we wanna help them. Now, there are people who came up in the last two services with major needs. And I said, we're gonna do the best we can because it's our heart. Um, Ashley and I, we were talking about it last night. We said, man, if we could meet everybody's needs, we would want to. We can't meet every single person's need, but we can help. And there was one person who came up to me. They said, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna give you my contact because they shared with me the need they have for their family. They said, I was gonna give you my address and number and let you guys follow up with me to see if, how much you could help our, our current need, how much money the church could help with. 
But they said, I just feel in my heart after sharing my need with you, my faith is grown that God is Jehovah Jireh. Paul's not Jehovah Jireh. Victory's not Jehovah. God's Jehovah Jireh. He's gonna take care of my family. And there was something, as they said that, I was like, are you sure? Because we wanna help. They said, no, I truly believe as I was sharing this that the Lord is building my faith to see the miracle happen for our family. So I wanna encourage you, after we take time to give our offering to the Lord, if you're here with a need, Don't be embarrassed to share that with our team, but trust that God is able to supply all that you need according to his riches and his glory in Christ Jesus. Salmon, will you pray over our offering today? Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We release a spirit of giving over this whole body. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are... A God that has already gone ahead and provided for our needs, Lord. We thank you that every mind that is thinking about giving, Lord, we understand that through our giving is how we enter into that miracle. Through our giving is how we enter into that paid for church. Through our giving is how we enter into the next revival. Lord, we just pray that today you will stretch our faith. The same conversation that my wife and I were having about giving and above and beyond. Lord, help families get to the same kind of rest in you, Lord, that we don't have to nickel and dime the master of the universe because, God, you own the cattle on a thousand hills. You can provide for all our needs. So, God, I just pray for this congregation that we will be a congregation that has generational giving through our kids and their kids and grandkids and their grandkids. We will be known the church that it gives, a church that has generational giving culture. And God, we just thank you for that. God, use us for your glory. And God, today we set this moment and say we are a giving church. All in you, Lord, we just thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, as you feel led, you can bring that card where you wrote your prayer down and lay it at the altar. Bring your offering if you'd like to. Lay it at the altar. Let's give to the Lord. Let's worship God. If you need more time to pray about it, think about it, we understand. Even if you say, you know, I'd like to give that miracle offering next week, we understand. But today, we're going to worship God and we're going to give to the Lord. Let's trust in the Lord.
Cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. standing I'm out here on this square but as as I was watching and worshiping I just felt like the Lord said I'm unlocking joy for people today there's a joy in generosity how many of y'all just felt even joy surrendering to God something today that you felt to, to do and that and then I felt this other thing I hear God saying there's some people in the room God's going to unlock more and more of his blessing on your family. Can we get ready to sing the blessing song? May his favor be upon you. Um, we're gonna end service here in just a few minutes, I promise. But how many of y'all in the room are standing and believing God for something financial right now? Where's that at? Okay, a lot of hands. All right, I'm gonna get specific. Who in the room is believing God specifically for a car that runs and works? Because you haven't had one, okay? All right, I hear y'all. Keep your hand raised. You're believing, you, 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 you're in a season where you need this, okay. All right. And I hear the Lord saying, there are people in the room and watching online that God says, you have the means to help some people in different ways. Now don't, I'm not gonna put pressure on you, but I'm just saying, don't be intimidated however God may ask you to help someone. Maybe it is a part of that where you go, you know, I can help them with a little bit, or maybe you say, I actually have an extra car that I wanna bless someone with, whatever that is. But I just feel like God wants to, to do some miraculous things this week. And on the other side of anyone who goes, what about me? If I release that, what am I going to see? I promise you can't outgive God. Anytime you help people, you can't outgive God. Only do something, not from a spirit of obligation or pressure. Only do it if the Holy Spirit is prompting you. Who in the room today has specific, um, you're, you're in a season, you're working hard, you're doing the best you can, but you go, there are some bills that are beyond me right now that I, I, I just need the help from God to pay these bills. If that's you, don't be embarrassed. Raise your hand. You're just saying, man, it's been extremely stressful trying to figure out how I'm gonna help pay some of these bills, okay? And even if these hands that are raised are only for God to see your faith and your honesty to say, I'm standing on a miracle from God. There's something about it. I remember standing in a room and there was a pastor who was preaching and he said, who in here, um, there was a group of pastors, there was about 30 of us, and this pastor who was preaching, he said, which pastor in this room has fallen on extremely hard times in your church and you can't right now um, continue to pay the monthly bills for your church to stay alive? Well, there was one guy in that room that stood up 
And it wasn't me, it was another guy. This was about eight years ago. I still remember, it was 2014. Ashley, you, you were with me there when he stood up. And if I said his name, many of you would know who he is. He's on TV now, but he stood up and tears start coming down his eyes. And he said, man, I don't think we're gonna make it financially as a church. And no one said anything in that room. No one walked up and handed him $100 or a check for $1,000, anything like that. Everyone just came around him and started praying. A week later, I called him. I said, hey, how can I help you with that? He said, it's crazy what God has done. And it didn't even just happen from people in that room. Somehow, after y'all prayed for me, there was something about me lifting my hand and honestly admitting how bad I was struggling because I was trying to pretend that our church was doing great when we were actually suffering financially. He said something about that moment of honesty unlocked prosperity. It was like God started blessing us. In the last seven days, we got more than enough to pay all of our bills and for future vision for their church. I'll tell you who it is. His name's Bobby Schuler. He pastors a church in Los Angeles, California. Hour of power, he's on TBN. But eight years ago, Bobby was in a very dark place and the Lord supernaturally provided for Bobby in that moment. And I felt like today God said, I wanna do it again for someone in the room, someone who's in a very hard place financially. And I promise you this, there's no one in this room that's named Jehovah Jireh, but there is one who's watching service today and he is Jehovah Jireh and he can meet all your needs. So if you're here today and you say, man, that's me. I'm in a very difficult, stressful financial place. I want you to just lift your hands up because we're gonna stretch our hands out and pray for supernatural financial miracles for every person that's in that major need right now. Lord, I pray for every hand that's raised. You see and you know and you see where they're at, you know what they're walking through, you know the stress they're carrying, the job they're working, the things they're trying to do to pay those bills. And I thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh and you own the cattle on a thousand hills. And today by faith, we come in agreement as a church body. Whatever we can do, we'll do. But God, we know and we trust that you will do the rest. God, that you are our provider, you are our source. So God, our trust is not in man. Our trust is not even in a church name or even in the government or some other person that might help us. Our trust is in Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and you are faithful. In Jesus' name, 